So in this video, we're going to find the basis for the subspace formed by a solution by the solution to a system of homogeneous equations. So we're we're asked to find a basis for uh, the solution set for this homogeneous system. And in this case, we're told the solution. If you weren't given the solution, you would have to find the solution by creating your augmented matrix and use your computer algebra system to put it into reduced row echelon form and interpret the result, something that you already have a lot of practice doing. So we don't need in this case to find the solution because we're being given the solution. Also, it says it can be shown that this solution is a subspace of R4. And because it says it can be shown, they're telling us that it's a subspace and that we don't need to check. So you, you can tell by how the question is worded whether you're being asked to show whether it is a subspace or not. If they didn't add this piece, then we would need to show that it forms a subspace by showing closure under scalar multiplication and closure under vector addition. But in this case, we're given the solution, so we just need to find its basis. So the first thing is we're going to, to do the same thing that we've been doing and break this apart so we can find the spanning set of vectors. So we go twice r minus twice t, comma, r minus 3t. We do r and we do t. And they want to break this apart. We can see that we have uh, scalars r and t. So we want to break it up into two vectors, one that has nothing but r's. So from the first component, I'm going to do 2r, second component r, third component r. And there's no r's in the fourth com component, so I'll put a 0. And then I'll go plus. And then first component has a minus 2t, comma. Third, second component has minus 3t, comma. Third component has no t's, and the fourth component has a single t. And then we go ahead and, and the, we recognize that the r and the t are just a scalar, so we break out the r by factoring it out of the vector components. So we get r times 2, comma, 1, comma, 2, comma, 1, comma, 1, comma, 0, plus t factored out times negative 2, comma, negative 3, comma, 0, comma, 1 just factoring the t out. And you could verify your work by distributing the r and the t back in. So clearly the vector 2, 1, 1, 0 and negative 2, negative 3, 0, 1 span all vectors of this form because we've just demonstrated that we can write any vector in this form as a linear combination of these two vectors. So our candidate for our basis is going to be the set of vectors 2, 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 1, 0, and the vector negative 2, negative 3, 0, 1. So remember to be a basis, you have to do two things. You have to span the subset or the subspace, which these two vectors do, but you also need to be linearly independent. So there's that sense in which we really do need to check for linear independence uh, because there's only two vectors. One would be to try to multiply this by a scalar and generate this vector. So I can see I would need to multiply by a negative one. Negative one times two would be negative two, but negative one times one would not be negative three. So because this vector isn't a scalar multiple of that one, I know this is going to be a linearly independent set. The formal way that we test for it is we check to see if there's a scalar C1 times 2, 1, 1, 0, the first vector in our uh, proposed basis, plus c sub 2, a second scalar, times the second proposed vector in our basis. And then we set it equal to the 0 vector. And remember, to be linearly independent, if for these two vectors to be linearly independent, the only solution that can exist is c sub 1 equal to c sub 2 equal to 0. If we have any non-trivial solutions, any solutions where c sub 1 or c sub 2 have values other than 0, then we would have a linearly dependent set and we would not have a basis for the subspace formed by vectors of this type. So you can kind of get by inspection that c sub 1 and c sub 2 are going to have to be equal to 0 because if we look at component 4, 
we see c sub 1 times 0 plus c sub 2 times 1 has to equal 0. That means c sub 2 must be equal to 0. And from looking at row, uh, row 3 here, we get c sub 1 times 1 plus c sub 2 times 0, which is going to equal just c sub 1, and that has to equal 0. So c sub 1 must be 0. And, and that's the only way to generate 0 in these two positions in this zero vector. So that tells us that the trivial solution is the only solution. So we have both things that we need for a basis. We have a spanning set of vectors, of vectors, of, of vectors for which every vector in the subspace can be written as a linear combination of them, and they are linearly independent vectors.